Hello there, this is Dr. Mintz. This is a case I encountered last night, a patient that came in with a gunshot injury. I'll let you look through this briefly, survey the abdomen, get a sense of what's going on here. Okay, so what you see is some bullet fragments some air in the soft tissues and something else is very wrong here isn't it where is the blood I want you to ask yourself right now there's blood or as they say in that YouTube video blood -a. there's blood -a somewhere here where is it and this is critical this is a good demonstration of whether you're beginning to understand the compartments of the abdomen, which is very important. So take a look at it. Don't just wait there for me to give you the answer. How would you describe the location? This is all blood here. All of this, this, that's all blood. How would you describe it? What location is it? Here again, you want a simple, succinct, correct statement. All right, so there you see it there. Okay, you have an idea by now? Well, let's take a look. What are the normal structures that we're seeing here? Where's the aorta? Where's the IVC? Well, here's the aorta and here's the IVC. They look quite small. They're displaced anteriorly. They're displaced. Where are they located? These are the psoas muscles. They are immediately adjacent to this hemorrhage. What space is immediately anterior to the psoas muscles? Some of this involves the kidney, the right kidney here, the right kidneys involved. What space is the right kidney located in? Well, I, I think I can hear you. Yep, you're all correct. It is retroperitoneal. Very good. So this is a large retroperitoneal hemorrhage. Came in through the right flank, tore through several structures. I think most critically, the kidney. Uh, if this had gone through the aorta, they would have probably died before they got to the hospital. This is the IBC. They're displaced because they're surrounded by blood. Where's the blood coming from? Probably a lot of it's coming from the kidney here. You can see the kidney is getting perfused though. How do we know that this kidney is getting perfused with blood from the renal artery? Because it's enhancing and even the nephrographic phase, the pattern of enhancement that we're seeing at that particular point is very comparable to the left. So while there's been a serious injury to the right kidney, it's not devastating as far as that kidney is concerned at least. We'll get into some of the details of the spaces around the kidney there is a perirenal space, there's an anterior and posterior pararenal space, but suffice it to say it's retroperitoneal. Now we have this contrast here. What is that? What is that bright contrast? Where is it coming from? Well, there are two possibilities. One is it could be coming out of a vessel, and meaning IV contrast enhanced blood that's leaking out, or it could be from the kidney itself. It's very dense though, isn't it? Any organ you know that would concentrate contrast in such a manner as to make it more dense than the blood that's enhancing with contrast? The kidney. So I think we have a collecting system injury here, and what's spilling out is actually urine. 
and that's why we got so much in this area, but the patient's still alive. If it had been a, an arterial injury and bleeding that profusely, they, they might have had more difficulty. Although I don't know for a fact whether this patient survived or not. And you have a defect in the kidney, which is a good, which can be briefly summarized as a laceration. It means just cut through at least a part of the kidney. So this is all retroperitoneal. And we're going down now. You can see how you've lost this margin with the psoas muscle. That's, I guess, as far as it goes. It did hit a rib on the way in. That bullet left some fragments. There's that rib, and so that sometimes causes the bullet, at a, at, depending on the velocity, to break into several parts. Okay. Any other findings? Oh, what's this up here? This is stomach, right? Stomach. Let's see, what's that? That's long base. What's this? Free intraperitoneal air. Free intraperitoneal air. Where is the air? It's in the peritoneal compartment, the peritoneal space. But it's probably not very important, right? Because it's just, just a little tiny bit, just a little bit, just a tiny bit of pneumoperitoneum. Won't hurt him, right? Right? Wrong. It doesn't matter whether you have literally a gallon of free air or one speck a millimeter of free air. They both have the same significance because it's not about the air. It's what the air portends. The air tell us, tells us that there is a perforated viscous, a hole in bowel. So we're not worried about the air that's getting out. We're concerned about the microorganisms, all of the bacteria that are leaking out with it. And if you have just one tiny speck, one millimeter of free air that's come from bowel, you can be sure that some organisms have gotten out, and therefore the patient is at risk for peritonitis. And peritonitis is potentially lethal, and very dangerous condition. And I guess that's all I've got for right now.